quantitative tightening and baby step rate hikes in 2018 caused the stock market to fall apart. Do you remember in 2018, the Fed, they were going, they were two and a half. They said we're going to the high, you know, mid to high three percent on the Fed funds rate. And the stock market fell apart. And the Fed had a promise to stop hiking rates. They did, they did at the end of 2018. Mm-hmm. Then they kept on with QT for a few more months. But then by the summer of 2019, the repo market froze and the stock market started to unwind. And they had a promise to stop QT. Well, they were they had to stop that when the Fed funds rate was 1.75%. They did that. This is all prior to the breakout of COVID-19. And that's when we had a lower stock market and much less debt in the system, much less debt in the system. So the fact that the Fed now thinks that they can get to 4% innocuously and do $95 billion a month in QT innocuously, you know, like watching paint dry, I think is asinine. But again, Tom, they have no choice to do it because Prior to COVID-19 and the $6 trillion in stimuli that they had to hand out to people, had $4.5 trillion monetized by the Fed, that's the increase in their balance sheet. Prior to that, there was no inflation. Inflation was all on Wall Street. It was all on asset prices. It wasn't in the consumer price index. But the CPI now is very close to, it was almost 10%. Now it's in the mid eights, but the core rate of CPI, the core rate of consumer price inflation accelerated month over month last month to a new high, okay? A new cycle high. So the Fed is, is making the calculation. It's like, hey, I've been, I've been in this asinine pursuit of 2% inflation for over a decade. I couldn't get there. I finally got there, but it, you know, if the Fed has a very difficult time, if you haven't noticed, controlling inflation. First, they wanted to, they, it used to be zero, okay? Then they didn't like that because it, it wasn't good enough. They, you know, Wall Street begs the Fed, to, hey, we need some kind of inflation to get these asset prices going. So then they assented to the fact that we'll get 2% inflation. Tried and tried and tried with QE. Couldn't get there because all of the, all of the inflation went on into the stocks and uh, bonds. And in real estate didn't get to the main economy, main street economy, which was which is a good thing that it didn't hit middle class. It just hit Wall Street. And then finally, it went miraculously from below 2% for many, many, many years, all the way up to double digits, very close to double digits. And on the producer prices, it was over double digits. And that was because of the unholy union between fiscal and monetary policy. So now the Fed has no credibility at all. So the Fed has now said that every single member of the FOMC, even Neil Kashkari, who was who used to be in, in Uber Dub, now they're all saying, hey, we are going to 4%. We are getting there as fast as possible. We don't care what happens to the economy. We don't care what happens to Wall Street. We must get inflation back to 2% and we have to get it there as fast as possible. So that's what's going to happen. I think on the way to getting inflation to 2% and on the way to getting the Fed funds rate to 4%, they're going to destroy the credit markets and wipe out the economy once again. But they, they're they actually telling you right now that once they get to 4 they're going to stay there for a long time. I have my doubts how long they'll be able to stay there because, again, I think the credit markets freeze and cause them to do something. Have to They have to react because if you can't float commercial paper, you, you can't float a junk bond, the economy just... Forget about a recession. It's a depression. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that they cannot pivot. Here's a note for the pivot prevaricators. (laughs) All of the, and I hear them all day on CNBS and even Bloomberg, all day they have these guests come on saying, you know, we we have, the Fed can't hike rates because the economy is going to slow. They have to do it to gain any credibility back that they've lost all of it and they have to gain some credibility back because the worst thing they want to happen, and this is what they've said, they don't want to have another repeat of the 70s when they see inflation start to come down, they pivot, and then it goes right back up. This is going to be, in my opinion, one of the deepest recessions we have ever seen and one of the sharpest declines in asset prices that we have ever seen. So, Michael, you know, we're talking a lot about 
let's say the indicators that the Fed is using, whether it's CPI or jobs numbers, whatever it is, is it possible that some of these indicators that they're relying on are misleading them? You know, if we combine jobs numbers with overall labor participation rate, does this paint a picture of more people needing to get second or third jobs? And yes. does this nuance not matter to the decision making process of the Fed? You know, listen, if anybody still believes that Powell and company have any idea or any prescient knowledge of what inflation is, what causes it, what's really going on with the economy, they have to be disabused of that. They're they really have no clue. Remember, this is the same group of people who, who told you that QT was going to be like watching paint dry. This is the same group of people who told you that inflation was transitory. They have no clue. I mean, if you look at what's going on in the labor market, and if you look at the household survey, not the establishment survey, there's hardly any jobs created this year at all. And the household survey usually leads the establishment survey. So let me be very clear. The economy is weak. The first half of 2022 was a recession. We're going to get a very small positive Q3 print, mostly due to a massive inventory build. When you build inventory, it's accretive to GDP. There's a 22.5% build in inventory year over year. Because, you know, remember, co corporations and suppliers couldn't get anything during COVID, so they overordered their, their their inventory to sales ratio has shot up very significantly. So they're loaded with things. When you order something as a business, it's accretive to GDP. But when you draw down inventories, it's a subtraction from GDP. Mm -hmm. You subtract that from consumption because you already counted it when you build the inventory. So Q4 is gonna be negative. So most of this year, in fact, year over year should be a negative GDP print and nominal GDP is coming down very quickly, not just real GDP, but nominal GDP is coming down because inflation is coming down. The second derivative of inflation is coming down, albeit not as fast as the pivot prevaricators would like, as I like to call them, because 40% of core CPI is housing related, it's owner's equivalent rent. And, that, and those rents are still going higher, not coming down. And the Fed knows this now, the Fed knows that in the pursuit of this ungodly 2% inflation, I don't know what got, how that got in their minds that the, the economy can't function properly unless we're destroying the purchasing power of consumers by a 2% annual rate. That's what they thought. Okay. But on, on, the, way of, on the way of creating 2% inflation, what they ended up doing was creating a real homelessness problem because people can't afford their rent, they can't pay for medicine, and they can't heat their houses. And that's that's the shame that the Fed understands. It's, 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 it's an embarrassment. It's a massive embarrassment to the Federal Reserve. So they're going to do whatever they can, whatever they have to do to bring inflation back down. And they will, they will destroy the economy and the markets. And that includes real estate, fixed income, and equities.